video, I will talk about a concept that hopefully will help you increase the speed and quality of your drum rolls. For this, we will talk about efficiency and anticipation. So this concept is very tied to the molar technique. So if you're not familiar with the molar technique, it's fine. I'll get in depth into it. So the first thing we need to pay attention to is what are the components of a fast and clean drum roll. So the first thing I realized when I was started working on this is that I had a lot of unnecessary motions. So I recorded myself and then I studied my videos in slow motion and I realized that my movements were not flowing correctly. And then I found this uh, concept that is the four strokes, the full stroke, down stroke, tap stroke and up stroke, which is what I'm going to talk about. And I realized that it goes deeper than just positions. So it actually goes into anticipation. And this is how we're going to connect our physical speed with our mental speed. Because fast hands mean nothing if our brain is slow. And a fast brain, same likewise, doesn't mean anything if it's not connected properly to the hands. So I'll talk about dynamics and about the distance between the stick and the drum. So the first thing we need to uh, defined here, I'm going to talk about a high position and a low position. That's it. We're not going to work with volumes in between. And we're going to make a very easy association is if your stick starts in a high position and you just let it fall, you're going to get an accent. If your stick is just like one inch above the drum and you just drop it, you'll get a tap stroke or a ghost note. So we have accents and ghost notes. And by connecting accents and ghost notes, that's how we create these melodic phrases. So if you're stuck with, for example, playing a, if you have to play a fast single stroke role and you're stuck, like I was for many years, uh, accenting just the first note of the group of four, then this workout will be perfect for you. So I'll start by explaining the full stroke and how to play it and what's the purpose of it. Then I'll talk about the downstroke, the tap stroke and the upstroke. And then finally I'll connect all four of them. And this will be just like a piece of the puzzle on how to make your own like melodic phrases just from accents and ghost notes. So the full stroke, we're gonna start in a high position and finish in a high position like this. So. We're not gonna think in terms of accents. So that's the first uh, thing that we have to change. Instead of thinking accent, 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 I'm gonna think full, full, full. And every time I play a full stroke, not only I play, not only I play an accent, but also I am anticipating a following accent. So it's not the same thing as doing this, and then going up, this and going up. So nothing wrong with that. So if you're playing slow, I can get away with this. But if I start playing fast, I want to be ready for the note that's coming next. And these are all accents. So if I want to play accents followed by accents, I'll go with a full stroke. Same thing with the left hand. And this is probably the first stroke that I realized that I wasn't as good as I want it to be, just because it was taking me some time to really let the stick bounce and catch it up here. So what you have to do is you, or what I do is I throw the stick and I let it bounce and then my, my hand just follows back and then I squeeze once I'm up here. So I'm just pretty much throwing and then squeezing the stick once I'm back up. That way I always play full strokes. These are all accents. The downstroke is a little bit different. For the downstroke, which is still an accent, I will start in a high position and finish in a low position this time. So I'm not gonna let the stick bounce. What I do is I throw the stick and right after I hit the path, I squeeze my hand because I don't want this here. I don't want the stick to bounce more than one inch. So I'm holding it right there. And the most common mistake I see here, and also by studying myself, is that the faster I go, the more 
my stick bounces. And the problem with this is that if I want to play an accent followed by a ghost note and my stick is up here, I'm not going to get a ghost note. At least it's not going to be clean. And when that happens at a faster speed, that's when drum rolls start becoming sloppy. So for the downstroke, very important to squeeze the stick right here. And the difference between the downstroke and the full stroke, unlike the full stroke that sets me up for a following accent, the downstroke sets me up for a following ghost note. So if I want to play accent ghost note, so pa, 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 instead of thinking accent ghost note, accent ghost note, I'm going to think down and then it can be a tap or a, or we'll think tap for now. So down and then tap. And we'll stop it there and then we'll do it again. Down, tap. Down, tap. And every time I play that, I'm always going to get an accent followed by a ghost note. So now we have the full stroke and the down stroke. Those are the only two strokes we're going to use to play accents. Now let's move to ghost notes. I'll start with the tap stroke just because it's a little bit simple, simpler. So it starts with in a low position and finishes in a low position like this. So it's literally just the tap. So make sure you're not tapping, going up and then repositioning and going down. You have to eliminate that unnecessary motion. So there we go. That's a tap with the right, tap with the left. So the tap stroke will give you as a result a ghost note and is already anticipating a following ghost note. So ghost note and I'm already in position for a following ghost note. So if I play down and I play a tap, that means that my following stroke is either going to be a tap or what I'm going to talk about now, the upstroke. Now the upstroke is probably the one that takes a little bit longer to develop. It's of course a little bit more practice or at least in my opinion, or in my case, that's what happened. It, for the tap stroke, it's very important that you start in a low position. So you don't want to go up, then tap, then up again. From here, pretty much what I'm doing is I'm releasing my wrist. So my wrist is very relaxed and I'm bringing my elbow up like this with a very loose wrist. So by doing that, I'm tapping the drum. So that's just a ghost note. I don't have to go up and then hit the drum. It's a consequence of my movement just by going up. I'm tapping the drum and I'm getting in position in a high position to hit a following accent. So once again, the upstroke, it starts in a low position and finishes in a high position. So for example, I'll go just with my right hand first, then with my left hand. If I play a full stroke, I'll get an accent followed by an accent. So now I'll play a down stroke, then I'll play a tap stroke and then I'll play an upstroke. So what, what I have there is full, down, tap, up, full, down, tap, up, full, down, tap, up. So instead of thinking accent, accent, ghost note, ghost note, accent, accent, ghost note, ghost note. Because when I think like that, I'm only thinking of two types of strokes. I'm not thinking about anticipation. So I'm already late. So that's why we, I think we need to make that adjustment. At least understand how it works is the full, down, tap, up. That's going to give you a, the sound you are looking for. But you're all, it's almost like hearing it before it happens. And then it's just a matter of practicing it. A, a great way to practice it that I think it, it feels silly and it feels a little bit dumb, but it's very effective is you say out loud the type of stroke you want to make. And that's how you make the connection between your brain and your hand. You want your hand to react exactly how you want it to react. So if you say full and you play a downstroke, it might happen and I'm pretty sure it's going to happen at first if you haven't worked on this. So you have to slow it down and for example, full, full, down, up, down, tap, tap, up, full. So your word has to be, has, or your command has to be followed with your hand impeccably. So once you have that, you can try the same exercise with your left hand, full, down, tap, up, pull, down, tap, up, pull, down, tap, up, pull, down, tap, up. Pull, down, tap, up. 
and this is what leads to our drum roll. How do we combine both hands? And of course, this is just a, this is we're just scratching the surface here. Uh, each pattern we learn is like a word, and we're trying to develop a language. So before we can write an essay or a drum solo, we have to learn how to write sentences. But before we learn how to write sentences or just drum phrases, we need to learn how we need to learn a bunch of words. So this is a word, for example, you know, or so this is of course time consuming. I don't think there's any shortcuts around this. This is precisely what I think we need to develop hundreds and hundreds of hours in working on. It's really worth it. And that's how I ended up developing this um, course here. It's called Fundamental Flow, uh, sorry, Fundamental Technique Developing Flow. I don't have it in front of me right now, sorry. But um, it's pretty much a guide and it starts off with uh, how to hold the stick, how to count, but then there's a section with about 300 exercises, 300 different words on you know, how to accent, how to play one same drum phrase, accent, accenting different parts of it with its corresponding tap stroke, upstroke or downstroke. So it's an amazing library. If you start working on each one of these exercises, at first it might seem a little bit complicated, but once you've done a few of them, five, 10 of them, you're going to start becoming faster at learning these until it gets to the point where you can mentally see all these words and all these patterns and you're going to be able to manifest them with no problem. So it really becomes something like So your mind and your hands are now connected and once you get to that point you're going to notice a dramatic improvement in your flow and drumming and of course that then is applied to the rest of the drum kit or whatever discipline you're learning in percussion. So if you're interested in acquiring this PDF I'm talking about, you can click the link in the description below. Like I said, it has more than 300 exercises related to this um, subject. And not only that, it also shows you where to take this from, how to create phrases using different stickings. Because right now, we're just talking about the single stroke roll. You can do the same with paradiddles, with paradiddle diddles, six stroke roll, and the list just goes on and on and on. And once you combine different stickings with the concept of upstrokes, downstrokes, full strokes, and tap strokes, then that's when you have absolute freedom to solo and all your ideas can be manifested clearly and accurately and effortlessly. So it's really worth it. And just to finish off here, I'll show you one more exercise. I just to give you an idea of where to go from here. So I'll start just with the simple one yanda, two yanda, three yanda, four yanda, a single stroke roll. So if I do all tap strokes, one yanda, two yanda, now I have the chance to accent any notes I want. So the easiest one is the one we all start playing, which is accenting the downbeats. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. But now to make this one cleaner, check it out. We're gonna use the same uh, concept we just uh, talked about. And what I'll do is I'll start in this position here. So this is a higher position. My left hand is only going to play ghost notes. So there's no need for my left hand to go here. That is, that is just going to take off from the efficiency. So my left hand, is always going to stay in this position. We're just going to play tap strokes with the left. And the right hand is the one that's going to go down, up, down, up. And then we're just going to alternate strokes. We have down, tap, up, tap. Down, tap, up, tap. Down, tap, up, tap. Down, tap, up, tap. Then if I wanted to play, for example, triplets, all I have to do is down, up, tap, down, up, tap, down, up, tap. So you see that these are all formulas. At first, if you haven't done this before, it's going to feel very difficult and very slow, but just push through it. I promise you the reward is really, really worth it. Anyone can do this. It's normal if at first it feels really hard but it starts getting easier with time until 
eventually you start getting rid of that and your musical phrases just start happening. So another nice one to know is, for example, if I want to play three accents. This was a pattern that was a nightmare for me before I knew about this. I couldn't play it. It, I, it sounded more like four accents. But the formula for this one is you start in high position with both hands and you go full, down, full, up. Full, down, full, up. So this is something that I really recommend you try, especially if you're struggling with a flow with drum rolls and ideas. It really changed the way I drum and this is complementary to stick control. Like I said before, imagine if you can combine different stickings to this concept, that's when you're going to have absolute freedom with your hands. So if, if you're not very familiar with anything other than singles, doubles and paradiddles, check out this video. There's 24 patterns there, 24 different stickings. They're all useful. And well, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will see you next time.